welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Gina, and if you're brand new here, all you need to know is that I'm Lisa's daughter, and I'm taking over today. We're gonna have some fun. I am making a double slider card. This card is amazing because it's interactive, and it's a lot of fun. Perfect for the holidays, perfect for birthdays, or really special wedding invitations, or just a really special card for a special person. So we're gonna do that today. You're gonna wanna stick around because at the very end, I'm gonna share a project sheet with you that has full color photos, uh, cutting dimensions, supply list, and there's also a template in there so you can recreate this project at home. If you're watching the replay, that is down in the video description below now, but if you're here in the live, hey, say hello in the chat. I'm actually with you right now in the chat. Uh, so welcome. If you'd like to chat along with us, make sure you log into your Gmail account. That's the only way that you can chat with us. That's on YouTube, not on us. So make sure you do that and say hello because we'd love to say hi to you. And other than that, I think there's no new news. We're just really close to Christmas, so we need all the Christmas ideas. So I have two Christmas ideas for you today and one that's kind of off the cuff, perfect for birthdays. So let's get started. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with some scoring. This is real red, and all I'm going to do is bring in a, a paper trimmer. And we talk about this trimmer all the time. If you're new to this channel, the reason why we love this trimmer from Stampin' Up is because it has the scoring blade and the cutting blade on the same track. It also has an appendable arm that goes all the way out to 17 inches. It's got a flat top on the top and the bottom, straight edge. It's absolutely incredible. And we love this see-through arm that goes just like that. So this is already pre-cut the real red cardstock at five and a half by 11. All I'm gonna do now is open up that appendable arm, move my cutting blade all the way to the bottom, and now I'm gonna use my scoring blade to do some scoring here. I'm gonna put it on the 11, and a, 11 inch side. I'm gonna move it all the way to my flat edge top, and my first score mark is gonna be at three and a half. Gonna run that through a couple of times, lift it up. Now this is where the appendable arm, the one that goes all the way out to 17 inches, comes in handy. Not only is it great for scrapbooking, but it's really good for when you have multiple score lines that go past six and a quarter, which is right here. The next score line is gonna be at seven and one eighth. So I'm gonna just line that up at seven and one eighth and bring this arm down and pass it by a couple more times. And then my last score mark is gonna be at 10 and 5 eighths. Now, if you are working on writing down all these measurements, again, don't worry about it because the project sheet is going to have all of those dimensions for you. So let me put this at 10 and 5 eighths. All right, so that's the only scoring that we're going to be doing for this card today. We do have a few more pieces, but those are all pre-cut. And again, just download that project sheet and you'll be good to go. I'm going to bring in my bone folder. That's right here. And all I'm gonna do real quick is just crease those lines. I love the bone folder. I think it's great because it reinforces your score marks. I don't have to use my hand to do it, um, but it also gives it a little bit more pressure. Whenever you use your fingers to kind of reinforce that score line, it never gives you that crisp crease. And that's what the bone folder does. And it's a one-time purchase. Like you don't need to repurchase this over and over again. It's definitely not a consumable product. All right, so all three of those are nice and scored. Now let's get to some stamping. Today I'm gonna to be using the Supremely Awesome stamp set. I think this is one of those overlooked stamp sets in the annual catalog. If you don't know, my mom and I are Italian, uh, through and through, can't get past it. I call myself a purebred. <laughs> but um, th I love this, we love pizza. I mean, who doesn't love pizza, okay? Uh, but these images are perfect for this card because they're nice and big. So I've pulled out a couple of them. Our little chef here, Luigi, that's what I call him. I pulled out your Supremely Awesome and I also pulled out the checkerboard. Now, what you would normally do is probably mount these on a clear block, but we got this handy dandy new tool. This is the Misty. This is from My Sweet Petunia. We are now affiliates with them. We're super excited to be affiliates with them. They sent us this. This is the mini Misty. They also sent us the regular size Misty. Let me grab that for you. That's here, you can really see the difference. And honestly, I've used both of them and I find both of them necessary. <laughs> and what I love about the Misty in general is that you have this arm that goes all the way flat. It has this really, really nice weighted 
magnet so you can just stick that to there your stuff does not move whenever you put it down all we just put a piece of washi tape here just so we can grab it a little bit easier because like i said this magnet is strong so we're going to be using the mini misty or you can use the regular size misty uh today you can find this in our craft room favorites under lisastampstudio.com shop craft room favorites again we are affiliates with them so we earn a small commission back from them uh and it doesn't cost you anything extra so it would be great if you could support us now, what I'm going to do is kind of just show off how awesome this Misty is by starting with our Luigi guy. So I'm going to bring him in, and then I just have a piece of scrap paper, and I'm going to stamp him. So what you do is you just put this right in the corner. So it lined up there. I'm going to bring my magnet and put it kind of towards the top, and then I'm just going to place him down. So I'll put him like right there. So I don't have to worry about that, but you're going to fold over the arm. Just kind of press down a little bit, not too crazy, and lift it back up. And now he's stuck on this panel over here. I'm going to take my memento ink pad and just ink him up really good. Just like that. And then I'm going to bring him back over and press. What I love about the Misty is that he kind of stays in the same position no matter where I open the arm or how good or not great I put the impression. So let's see if what happens. So see how there's some white spots still in here? Let me bring this to you. So it's a good impression, but it's not a great impression, but this is where the Misty shines because if I had a clear block, I would be pretty hard to reline this up to get a really good black. Uh, in those dark spots. But with the Misty, it's in the exact position. It's a positioning tool. So I can just go back over, re-ink that, and just press in those concentrated areas a little bit more. And then look, boom, perfectly black inked. Isn't that great? That's what I love about the Misty. You're probably wondering, well, how do you clean this? Because you're just going to pick this up and put it in your scrub scrubber? Absolutely not. Uh, you can, <laughs> but that's not what I'm going to do. It gets ink kind of everywhere. I have the chamois. This is the chamois from Stampin' Up. Um, it's great for this product. So basically all you do is wet it. So I'm just bringing in some water with a little bit of cleaner. And then I'm going to run that over and just clean it. And then what we like to do just to make things a little bit faster, you can let, obviously let this air dry, is bring in a little washcloth and just wipe it off. So we stamped our guy. We're gonna put him off to the side for just a second. We have a few more things to stamp here. I'm actually going to bring in my card base that I scored and I am going to put these checkered marks on the top and the bottom. Again, this is where the Misty shines. So what we're gonna do is bring in the regular size Misty. Okay, so I'm lining it up right at the corner edge, making sure it's all the way there. And then I'm gonna put my magnet down so now it's not gonna move at all. And then what I'm going to do is just line up my stamp all the way to the corner here so I can get a nice impression because I want my checkers to be at the top and the bottom here. And so I'm just going to put that right there, close that, make sure it sticks, boom, boom, boom. Perfect. Now, I'm going to ink it up using Real Red. So I'm doing tone on tone. This is a great way to kind of leave an impression that you can see, but it's not black and to the forefront. And I would just really love tone on tone. So I'm inking that up. You can see that I am flipping over the stamp pad so I can get a really good ink on there. And then all I'm going to do is flip that appendable arm back over. I don't have to worry about lining it up because it's the Misty and it's already in place. Push, push, push. You can also use something called the Chucky. Um, I think it's sold on Etsy and they make them. And it's basically just a tool that you can use so you don't have to use your hand and it just allows you to put pressure on it. All right, there we go. And then all I'm going to do is I'm leaving that exactly where it is. I'm gonna 180 my cardstock, make sure it's up in the corner, and then put my magnet back on and I'm gonna ring this again. So as you can see, because I put this on this panel right here, I don't have to move it and realign it again, especially because this is my front. I don't need to worry about these pieces because those are my sides because of the checker pattern. It doesn't have to be perfect. So you put it once down and you don't have to reposition it again. That looks great. All right, so now I'm gonna clean it again and we'll move on. Bringing back my mini Misty and then I have a piece that's already pre-cut. 
What I'm going to show you one more thing with this Misty that I absolutely love is if you have long phrases like this, I don't want it to be this long because this is going to be vertical, so up and down, and it doesn't fit that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack the letters, and the Misty is perfect for this. I'm just going to put my magnet down at the top, I'm going to put your kind of at the center here. And then I'm gonna put that arm down and then open the arm again and it's attached. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take in my stamp and write marker and I'm gonna use the brush side and all I'm gonna do here is just color in the word your. So I don't have to worry about using the tape method if you've seen us do that before where you tape off sections you don't want and then go ahead and put in your ink pad, pull off the tape and you just have that. All I'm gonna do is just use my stamp and write marker, color the word your, bring it back over, stamp, lift, and it's perfect impression. So now what I'm gonna do is clean that, dry it. All right, and I'm gonna lift that up. I'm gonna line up supremely. That looks pretty good, right about there. And then I'm gonna repeat the process. So now I'm just gonna color supremely with my stamp and write marker. I am using the brush tip and not the pen side. Color that all in. And then what we're gonna do is bring our arm back over and stamp. You see how the S is a little funky there? It's gonna recolor in that S. I get to go back over it. Press concentrating on that S. Boom, perfect. Clean it and then I'm gonna do it one more time. Same process for awesome. All right, so I did your supremely awesome. It looks just like that. While I'm cleaning off the word awesome, this is why I think the Misty is one of those very handy products to have on hand, just because you can do so much with it. And I didn't even use one of the main methods for it. And it's when you stamp a whole bunch of cards. It's perfect for that position. You don't have to worry about repositioning anything. You put your stamp down once and you can move on. So there we go. And then remember we also did our little chef, AKA Luigi, and we did this border on our card base there. But let me show you a little trick with coloring and adding some color to the chef. So chefs, we know they're mostly, they wear white, but white on white is not always the best when you're talking about dimension and whatnot. So here's a little trick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Stampin' Blends. These are alcohol based, they come in a combo, light and dark. They have a chisel tip and they have a pen tip as noted. I'm actually just gonna be using the light for this. And I'm gonna use the chisel tip and I'm just gonna add some shadowy points here. So I'm gonna follow these lines that are notated on his hat. And I'm just gonna go ahead and outline the top ever so lightly there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and also do the same thing to the, his chest area right here. Okay, so once that's done, I'm gonna put that aside and then I'm gonna bring in the alcohol lifter. This is a color lifter. I think this is one of the overlooked products. My mom fell in love with it way before I did, of course. And I was like, I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. Okay, I need it. I do need it. I absolutely need it. <laughs> That's kind of the thought process that happened. So what's great about this is not only if you make a mistake, it lifts the color. So if you color outside the lines, it just fully removes it. You can also do this little trick with it. So all I'm gonna do is kind of just go over those marks that I've already made. I'm gonna add some of that color lifter to it, just slightly going over it. And what it's gonna do is gonna dull that color and kind of move it away from the corners. And so it's going to end up looking like a, a little dirtied hat. It's gonna look a little used and worn. It's gonna give it a little bit more dimension. I'm gonna do the same thing along the edges of his chest on his little apron here. And as you can see, the alcohol is starting to pull that color towards the center. And that's kind of what I want. So once that processes and once you color the rest of him and cut him out, he's gonna look exactly like this. And isn't that fun? You can really see how that color lifter really shines in these areas and it just makes him pop a little bit. You do have to fussy cut him, but it's a really big image and I know you can do it. While you fussy cut haters out there, my goal is to transform you into a fussy cut lover. All right, so I did that. I took, you know, your supremely awesome, the insert, and all I did was randomly stamp some of these pizza slices from the stamp set, the big one and the small one. And so I added some of that, I colored them in, it looks just like this. 
This is a great technique or tip to do when you don't have a background stamp or you don't want to use designer paper is just to use the pieces in the stamp set and just randomly use it to make a background or to create a little oomph to your card. So that's what I did here. What I thought was this needed to have a little sparkle, some shine. So all I did was cut out a piece of silver foil and I'm going to layer this. So I'm going to add some adhesive to the back here and I'm just going to layer this up just like that. Now we got a nice shine there. And then I did the same thing for the other insert. So I stamped some pizza slices towards the bottom. I laid it on a silver. And then we have our focal point, which is the front of the card. And I just stamped pizza all over the place, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna mount that to the front with our Luigi guy. So we'll get there to in a second, but let's make this slider card work. So now that we're gonna assemble this whole card together and make the slider happen, remember this is your center panel. So this is gonna be your image panel, the front of the card. I am doing it vertically just as a reminder, not horizontally. And these panels on the side here are going to be tucked under. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to flip this over. So remember this is your center panel still. And then I'm gonna flip it again because you want to make sure that this little tiny flap, AKA the adhesive flap, is going to be on your right hand side. That's super important because you're gonna put your plastic bag, what's gonna help your mechanism move and pull, on the left hand side, the side without the little flap. Then we're gonna bring in our plastic bag. This is just a Target bag, any other Target lovers out there. All I'm going to do is place my plastic bag like that and then fold it back over. Now, your plastic bag can be any size. Obviously, don't make it as big or bigger than the space allowed. I found that the smaller plastic bag, the litter, the better that it moves. Um, so this is the width that I went with. I also used the trimmer to go ahead and cut it because I found when I used my scissors, there's too many pieces that, you know, just kind of rip and tear. So the straight edge is the best way to go in my opinion. So that's why I cut it on the paper trimmer. And then all I'm doing is taking in some household tape and I'm making sure that this isn't super tight. You wanna make sure that your paper bag is just loosely fitted there. And then all I'm going to do is tape the edge down. Now you don't want to tape it to the card. So all I'm going to do now is flip that over, these edges over. And I do recommend that you make sure that it does go over just ever so slightly because you don't want anything to catch. Okay, last but not least, I'm gonna do the same thing to the bottom fold here that's happening underneath. All right, perfect. So it's gonna move just like this, and it's gonna move a lot better when we actually add those inserts. But you wanna make sure that it is movable, so mine is. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring in some tear and tape. At the studio, we call this chihuahua tape because it's so strong, you can stick a chihuahua to the wall. Um, so that's a little backstory to that. But I'm gonna use this, this stuff is very strong. I'm gonna put a small tab on the bottom and make sure that it's only going on your plastic bag. And then what I'm gonna do is flip that flap over and a small tab on the top. Again, just focusing on that plastic bag. Now, I do have two inserts that are cut. These are gonna layer when we're done, but I found that it's easier not to put those, all those pieces together and then assemble it, is to just put these on first. So I'm just gonna take off this tear and tape. This is kind of where your take your pick tool really shines. We love this thing at the studio. If you heard us talk about it a lot, if you're a fan of our channel, it has a putty tip on one side and then it has a very uh, pointed edge on the other. You can dial this out, put it back in, and it has a putty tip here. This is great for when you have mistakes and you have to kind of lift them up. Um, but I'm gonna dial that and I'm just gonna use this pointy edge right here and it's gonna help me really lift this corner. Perfect. And then I'm going to take one of those pre-cut inserts and I'm just going to line that up and push it down. Then I'm gonna flip it back over and do the same thing, taking my take your pick tool, lifting up that edge, pulling off that top piece, and then lining up my next insert and pushing it down. So now you can see that our inserts are there. It is sliding, it is pulling, that's what you want it to do. I'm gonna line those back up. And now what I'm going to do is put adhesive on this little sliver right here. Your adhesive is going to go on the outside. So you don't want your adhesive here. You want your adhesive on the outside. So I'm gonna push that down one more time, take my tear and tape, and I'm gonna follow that all the way down. 
Okay, now that the adhesive is down, don't adhere it yet, there's one more really important step that you wanna do. This is the 3 4 inch circle punch. You can really use any size up to an inch, but I found that 3 4 of an inch really worked for this card. And so all I'm going to do now is fold this up like a book. I'm gonna make sure I'm punching from the top here. And I'm just going to punch that panel. So with the panel up, got my two feet down, flip my punch over so I can kind of see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to put this halfway in that circle to the best of my abilities, lining it up, and then I'm gonna punch. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, pushing it through halfway to the best of my abilities, lining it up, centering it, punch. So that's gonna help you with the pull tabs, pulling those out. So that's really important before you adhere the card together. So let's adhere this card. It's flipped back over. I'm gonna use that take your pick tool again, and I'm going to just use that tip to help me take off this long strip here, just like that. Remember, this is very sticky, and so you're gonna to want to make sure that you have this all lined up before you go ahead and push it down. I'm gonna turn it vertically. I want this tab piece to be stuck underneath this side, so I'm gonna pull it down, kind of like a book, I'm gonna flip it again, flip it up, and I want it to go here. This is the pull tab right here. I want it to go on this inside right here. So I'm gonna pull this up, tuck it underneath, tuck the tab underneath, making sure I'm not hitting the plastic bag, and I'm gonna adhere it. All right, just like that. And don't worry if that confused you. I do have a template in the project sheet in the video description below. And now you can see you can pull out your pull tabs pretty easily. So let's decorate this card because this is the best part about this card. Vertically going, I'm now gonna bring in my pieces that we pre-decorated. Remember we put that silver foil on the edge there so it looks really cool. I want this one at the bottom and this one at the top. So let's just add some adhesive. And then all I'm gonna do is slide it into that hole. And then all I'm gonna do is line this up, push down, and then push all my pieces down. Okay, so that's the top. And then I'm gonna make sure that the bottom is decorated as well. Flip this over, add some adhesive, and then repeat the process. Slide it in, and then we're just gonna line up those edges so we have a small border. Just like that. All right, perfect. So now you can see that it slides out just like that. And let's decorate the front. Remember I did do this earlier. So I just randomly stamped those pizzas and colored them in. All I'm gonna do is add some adhesive and just center it in between these two checkered marks. Okay, then we have our little friend Luigi. I'm gonna flip him over and put some dimensionals on him. Uh, a good tip with dimensionals is make sure you always balance them because it does go through the mail meter and we want to make sure that our card that we spent so much time on comes out the way we wanted it to. We intended it to when we made it for the recipient. Nothing's worse is when you send a card in the mail and it comes out all crazy because it went through the mail meter and we didn't put enough dimensionals on it. So I'm just balancing that the best that I can, making sure I'm covering a lot of him taking off those back pieces. Then I'm just gonna center him. There we go, that's our card. Look how cute this is. And then you can just pull it out and slide it. Isn't that fun? It's almost, it's so long, it almost doesn't fit all the way in the screen, but look how fun that is. It's a really great interactive card and it's not that hard. So you can definitely make this at home. It's great for a really special person. So here's that card, but let me show you the other samples I have. I think you're gonna enjoy these because Christmas is coming right around the corner. I can't believe it. Um, so these are some Christmas ideas. This is using festive and fun, another whimsy card. You know, I love whimsy if you are not new here. So this is using the giraffe at the top and all I'm gonna do is use that pole and just pull it out just like that and it's really cute. You can add some photos here. You can just write a really long message. But this is what the festive and fun one looks like. It's really great for the kids. I just love interactive cards like that. Or the young at heart. The next one is uh, a staple because I'm not Gina unless I put a pocket on something. So you know I found the perfect idea for a pocket card here. So all I'm gonna do is pull out the edges and you can see 
I have the perfect Christmas card. This is using Very Cute Sweet. Uh, this here's your gift card right here. Perfect gift card pocket slot it goes right there. Perfect spot right here for you to write any uh, note to the recipient and just close it right up. You can see I put some a lot of glitter on there. Um, I love glitter this time of year. I put some glitter right here on the snow banks, on the presents, on the trees. It's just a really great card for a very special person, and especially this time of year. So these are the three cards that I have for you today. All right, those are the cards. Let me know which one is your favorite down in the video description below. And make sure that you also go ahead and post this on social media so I can see when you recreate these. You can just tag us at Lisa Stamp Studio on Instagram or on Facebook. We're on both of those platforms. I would love to see you recreate these cards. If you do leave a comment, know that we do reply to every single one of them here on YouTube and I also see them. So I'd love to hear from you. Let me know which one is your favorite. The next video is going to be next Monday, November 27th, right after Thanksgiving. And we can't wait to share more with you then. My mom will be back sharing another amazing fun fold card. This is my last video of 2023. I will be seeing you in 2024. I'm so excited to see you then in January. So make sure you mark your calendars for that if you enjoy these videos. Can't wait to see you all again in the new year and have a great Thanksgiving.